All right, what's up, people? So, today, well, this morning, I should say, um, I've decided that uh, I want to talk about um, caffeine and um, why it can be either good or bad for you. And to be honest, this is a uh, workout channel, so I'm going to focus on um the caffeine that people use mostly uh, when working out, which is uh, any type of uh, any type of pre-workout, uh, workout drink, all that, all that stuff. So that's pretty much what I'm gonna focus on the most on this one, and I'm gonna tell you why you really should leave that shit alone. If you care anything about your health really should leave that shit alone. Me personally, um, have I ever taken pre-workouts? Yes. Um, I, I don't know. I'm kind of a weird bird that um, a lot of times I often wonder. A lot of her time. Anyway, a lot of times I often wonder if people just, like it's in their mind. Like they've taken something and, oh, it's working. You know, the, the subliminal you know, the, the sugar pill effect, because caffeine doesn't really do anything for me. I'm drinking caffeine drinks, and they don't, they don't give me energy. They don't do anything for me. Coffee doesn't do anything for me. I don't drink coffee. Um, I don't go out of my way to get caffeine. Um, I do drink tea, which has caffeine in it, but um, I don't drink the tea for the caffeine, though. So, and, and I'm going to explain to you, basically, well, that's the main reason it never worked for me, but after doing some research, um, here's the reason why I advocate against all this crap that they create for you to take. Um, so, basically, the only caffeine that's really actually helpful to you is caffeine found in coffee or found in tea. Any type of synthetic caffeine, meaning any of the caffeines found in these energy drinks, um, energy shots... Uh, pre-workouts, whether it's powder, whether it's um, liquid form, it doesn't matter. All of that crap is synthetic and man-made. And in case you didn't know, when things are synthetic and man-made and they're not a natural source of th something, it's always inferior to the natural version and there'll usually always be side effects. Um, what are the pros of caffeine? What can they do for you? They can help lower your risk for heart disease, uh, diabetes, stroke, and cancer. That's because caffeine has antioxidants. Um, but like I said, this has to be the natural version of caffeine. It has to be the, the caffeine that's found in foods or drinks naturally, not the synthetic stuff. It has to be the kind from tea, from coffee, from uh, cocoa. If I'm not mistaken, cocoa has some caffeine in it. But we're not talking a Hershey chocolate bar. We're not talking about that. that no, that has nothing in it but sugar. Um... Now, what are the cons of caffeine? Okay, so it's a stimulant. And in high doses, anything over 500 milligrams is, is harmful to you. Um, I think your daily amount that a normal adult is supposed to get is between 450 and 475 milligrams. And anything over 500 milligrams is harmful to you. Um, for kids, I have no idea. I don't think kids should really be partaking in a lot of caffeine anyway. But, um, but yeah, it's a stimulant, and, um, basically it acts like a drug at high amounts. Um, it can cause, um, if y'all wonder what I'm looking at, I got notes. Uh, it can cause nervousness, irritability, insomnia, upset stomach, muscle tremors, irregular heartbeat. It can lower your bone absorption for calcium. That's usually in elderly women. Okay, so I have a cat that's deciding to be crazy. Um... And it's pretty much well known that energy drinks, pre-workouts, all that, that's the worst kind of caffeine that you can um, consume because they, they contain excessive amounts of sugar, um, which is bad for you. So you're getting caffeine in excess and you're getting sugar in ex excess. Um, there's no nutritional benefits. There's no antioxidants in the synthetic types of caffeine. Um, the ingredients often will interact with any prescription medications that you're taking. So if you're taking any prescription medications, um, 
yeah, you can almost bet that that caffeine is going to interact with those prescription medications, and it's probably going to cause some unwanted um, effects, side effects, um, and it also can it can decrease the um, effect. It, it can decrease how effective your prescription medications you're taking, whatever they might be. Um, most pre-workouts have way over your daily recommended amount of caffeine in them, and I have seen people take these pre-workouts two and three times a day, four times a day sometimes. It depends on how, how often this person is hitting the gym. So you're getting a ridiculous amount of caffeine in you that's the bad kind that's causing all of the stuff that I said before. Um, caffeine can con contribute to anxiety significantly. Um, I'm not saying that for everybody, but they did a case, and I think they said, let me see, I think they said uh, out of all the people that were in this study, when exposed to caffeine, over 65% of them exhibited the side effects, um, the irritability, the insomnia. It basically, and it made their anxiety way worse. Over 65% of the people in the study versus um, those that weren't exposed to the caffeine, their anxiety was not worse. They did not experience all the other things because um, anxiety actually can heighten uh, those very things, you know, being irritable, can't sleep, um, all those things. Anxiety just makes it worse. And so the caffeine actually heightens that and makes your anxiety worse, which is um, not, a <clears throat> not a good thing because about 70% of Americans at the very least, I don't know what the, um, the global number is, but 70% of Americans struggle with anxiety on some level. So that's a very um, large percentage of the population. Um, caffeine increases your stress hormones. Um, it actually inhibited, inhibits your calming neurotransmitters. So neurotransmitters are basically hormones in your brain that help to calm you. Um, it's basically a natural Valium. It's what they, when they make Valium, they actually study what actually happens in the brain and they created a synthetic version of the natural neurotransmitter that calms you. Um, it actually inhibits that from working properly. Um, it depletes your serotonin, uh, which is tied to happiness. So when you take uh, a lot of caffeine and stuff over and over, just repeatedly, you might not feel as happy. Um, it causes insomnia, anxious thoughts. Um, it makes you restless at night. A lot of times your brain can't really shut down and, and do what it's supposed to do, um, which is not good. Um, because if you're in the gym, you're working out, etc., you need rest. And if you can't rest, and that, that doesn't mean just you're asleep with your eyes closed. No, that means actually getting into REM sleep. And a lot of people think just because your eyes are closed and that you were asleep, that it matters it doesn't you have to get to REM sleep REM is where your body is actually resting if you're not getting to REM sleep I have news for you you just sleep you're not really getting rest there's a difference between sleeping and resting um, rest is a very um, to me a very um, much more deeper concept than just the subliminal uh, sleeping uh, caffeine uh, let me see yeah, so caffeine depletes stages three and four during sleep, which is actually the restorative sleep stages. So that's what I mean when I say rest. Um, if you're not getting to the restorative sleep stages, which is stages three and four, those are deep sleep. That's, that's where REM occurs, which is rapid eye movement, in case anybody doesn't know what that means. Um, that's where your, your, your deep restorative sleep, the sleep where you at, your body actually repairs itself. It restores itself. You know, after workouts, after just just normal daily stress, just that's where your body actually hits the reset button. If you never get to that point because of a number of things, like I said, 70% of people have anxiety. So that's a large percent of the population. And then if you tack on top of that, you're taking all these pre-workouts and all this other crap, you're just adding to that. And if you wonder why you feel like you have to sleep so much... Look at what you're doing to yourself if you're taking these things on the regular. Um, let's see what else. Um, we're not, and, and, and just to touch on a little bit, 
these these um, pre-workout drinks and stuff, where they make this stuff at, please don't think this is in healthy, nice, wonderful places. It's often produced in factories that are filthy, that they wouldn't even allow regular food to be produced. Um, there have been people who have visited places in China where they make this stuff, and they are like, it smells so bad, like it smells worse than, you know, slaughtering houses where they kill animals to make food. Um, the places are often dilapidated. Um, oftentimes they use fossil fuels to make these things. So basically gasoline, oil, things like that. Um, so these things are, those things are not healthy for you to be in ingesting anyway. Um, it would deplete your magnesium and, and magnesium is very crucial in brain health. Um, it's also very crucial in people who have anxiety, uh, depression, addictions, ADHD, bipolar, schizophrenia, and Alzheimer's. So magne uh, magnesium, most people actually don't really get enough mag magnesium, uh, not even close. Um, and once again, if you have any of those ailments that I just mentioned, you're depleting the one, one of the minerals that... Um, or one of the nutrients, I should say, because magnesium a mineral. It's on the periodic chart. But anyway, um, you're depleting one of the things that could help you fend off the symptoms of those ailments because the caffeine is going to deplete your magnesium. Um, caffeine robs your B-complex vitamins. B-complex vitamins are actually anti-stress. Um, and once again, I feel like the whole purpose of working out, being healthy, et cetera, is to eliminate stress, lower anxiety, those things like that. And the caffeine is working in the total opposite direction. Um, yeah, you might feel like you get a little amped up right before your workout. But once again, it's just kind of like, look at all the stuff it's doing to you in the background. Look at all the stuff it's going to do to you as a side effect. Um, Caffeine also readily induces panic attacks. Um, they did a study on that, and they showed that when uh, when giving the test subjects 480 milligrams of caffeine, 61 of them, 61 percent of them had uh, caffeine-induced panic attacks, um, which that's that's crazy to me. They you do a study, and you're you're only giving them 480 milligrams of caffeine and 61% of them had caffeine induced panic attacks. That's crazy. That's crazy to me. So, you know, all of this stuff just points to leave that stuff alone. Just leave it alone. Um, back in the day before they had pre-workouts, people was, people was getting ripped without it. Me personally, I, I'm going to be honest with you. I feel like if you really put your mind to it, because here's the thing, if if you've resolved to yourself that you're going to work out, you're going to go to the gym, you're going to do this, that, and other, use your mind to do it for a lot of reasons. Um, for me personally, yeah, there's plenty of days I don't feel like going to the gym. But I get in there and I figure out how to amp myself up. I don't go drink some drink and so I can be bouncing off the damn walls. No. Get your mind together. Learn how to amp yourself up. Learn how to do whatever you need to do um, to get yourself amped up to work out. Because I think Tom Platts said it best. You know, back in the day, they they wanted it. You know what I mean? They wanted it. They may not have wanted to be in the gym, but they wanted whatever results they was going for. Whether they was competing, whether they wanted to get stronger, whether they were just whatever, they wanted it. So it was like you came into the gym with a certain mindset. It all started with your mindset. And I think now there's a difference between, you know, old school versus this new school mentality. It's like, oh, I don't want to really have the mindset. I want pill to do it. I want everything else to do it except for me. I want something external to me to do everything. You know, that's why the craze of steroids is so, so out of control. You know, people want a pill. They want some magic. They want something external to them to do it. Instead of looking within, you have it. You have whatever it is you need. You just got to search for it. It's in you somewhere. Find it. You don't need all this extra crap that's dragging you down, that's causing health issues. You're negating the purpose of you working out. Working out should be about health. Health, period. Whether, whether it's helping you mentally, 
whether it's helping you physically, because I, I feel like working out in the gym helps you both mentally and physically. Why? When I go to the gym, I got to get my mind right to get under that heavy ass weight. I'm not going to use something else to get my mind right. You feel what I'm saying? So, you know, and if you just got to have some kind of caffeine, green tea is the best one. Green tea is the one that, that really helps you actually be able to do things. And it helps with your calming neurotransmitters. It helps uh, increase the um, state of feeling of meditation. But it's not, now I'm going to be honest, green tea not going to amp you up and have you jumping up and down that great. But, you know, just... Y'all just think about that. Stay away from them damn pre-workouts. They're full of shit. They're hurting you. They're not good for you. This is 15 minutes, y'all. So, till next time, I'll see you guys later.